this is an empty box. And today I will show you how you can use a servo motor connected to an any 505 timer and turn this box into your very own DIY safe, no microcontrollers needed. Hi, my name is Jens and I believe that everybody can learn electronics and this channel here is all about beginner friendly electronics tutorials and projects with and without microcontrollers. And if you want to build this little safe for yourself, then here's what you need. A 400 pin breadboard, a 4.5 volt AA battery pack, an LED with a 470 ohm current limiting resistor and a 100 microfarad capacitor. And for each servo channel, and we will build three of these today, you need a servo, a 50 kilo ohm potentiometer, two pin headers, the NE555 timer IC, capacitors, a diode and two resistors. And of course you also need a nice box and I'm using a clear one here today and you also need some wire. And as always, all of these items are linked in the companion article on friendlywire.com. So the main idea of this project is actually very simple. Servos have a range of around 180 degrees and we can control that range with a simple potentiometer and an any 505 timer, more on that later. And if we arrange these servos just the right way, we can turn them into a lock. Only if all three knobs are turned exactly to the right position, the door will open, otherwise it will remain locked because one of the servo arms or more block the door from opening. And if you want to set a new code, well first open the door. Then you can just detach the three servo arms from the servos, which can be a bit fiddly, but you can do it. And then you can set the knobs to your new combination. And at last you just reattach the servo arms so that they point upright and you've just set a new code. And enter your new code and the door opens again. How easy is that? All without a microcontroller. So I used acrylic to build this safe in this video because it makes it easier to see for you guys what's going on on the inside. But if you want to do this for yourself, you should probably use wood or anything that isn't see-through because otherwise you can just easily guess the code from just like turning the knobs and seeing these little arms move. But speaking of those little arms, they are controlled by servo motors. So how does a servo actually work? Servos have three pins, VDD, ground and a signal input. The typical operating voltage is between 4 and 5 volts, so it works great with three AA batteries. And we use the signal pin to control the position of the servo. Sending a 0.5 millisecond pulse like this turns the servo all the way to the left. And sending a 2.5 millisecond pulse like this turns it all the way to the right. And a signal between that moves the arm to a position in between. Now the overall refresh rate or period of this signal, mostly for historical reasons, is around 50 Hz. But it is not so critical for modern servos and it can be slightly different as well. So basically we have to create a signal that is 0.5 milliseconds to 2.5 milliseconds long and do that around 20 times per second. Now the exact numbers depend a little bit on which servo you're using, so make sure you check out your servo's datasheet first. And you could create the signal with a microcontroller and many people do that, but for today I thought it would be fun to visit an old friend instead, the NE555 timer. Now we have a detailed video on this right here that goes through all the basics of the NE555, how to use it. So for today's video I thought we just jump right ahead and look at the schematic. So here it is, our NE555 connected as an A-stable oscillator and on its output it creates a signal like this. The on time is set by the timing capacitor C1 down here and the resistor R1 and whatever part of R2 is on this side of the potentiometer's wiper. And you guessed it, the off time is set by R3 and the other side of R2. This is the on time for the potentiometer turned all the way up and all the way down. And here is the off time for both potentiometer positions as well. You can see that it works out nicely with these values. But if you want to be more fancy and make it adjustable, you can always replace these fixed resistors R1 and R3 with potentiometers as well, so that you have to set them once to get everything spot on. But back to our version of this circuit. Did you notice that the sum of the on and the off time is always the same? That's all thanks to the diode D1. It makes sure that the capacitor C1 is only ever charged through R1 and R2 and never through R3. And the capacitors C2, C3 and C4 are just here for stability. Now take that schematic, copy and paste it three times in total and connect some batteries and here is the final product. It does look a bit more complicated because I added some pin headers to the schematic and that is just because we will connect the servos and the potentiometers with longer leads. This here on the left is a status indicator LED and a 4.5 volt battery pack and we are using one with an included on off switch for convenience. And with all of this out of the way, let's go ahead and build the circuit on our breadboard. 
place the 400 pin breadboard in front of you with row 1 facing to the top, insert the NE505 in row 4 and connect it to VDD on pin 8 and to ground on pin 1. Next connect the reset pin to VDD as well and then add the 100 nanofarad filter capacitor C4. Insert R1 between row 1 and the positive power rail, insert the potentiometer pin header and connect its center pin down to pin 7 of the NE505. Next, connect its lower pin to pin 6 of the NE505 via the resistor R3 and then insert the diode D1 between pin 6 and 7. Make sure that the diode's cathode, the side with the black ring, is connected to pin 6. Connect pin 6 and 2 and finally insert the timing capacitor C1 from pin 2 to ground. Place the servo pin header in row 6, insert C2 from pin 5 to ground and insert the bulk capacitor C3 in the power rail close to the NE505. Then copy and paste the same circuit two more times. Now connect the positive power rails in row 9 like this and the negative power rails in row 17 as well before placing the chunky 100 microfarad bulk capacitor in the power rail as well for extra stability. Connect a positive wire to row 2 on the top left, insert LED1 with its positive terminal in row 2 and connect its cathode to ground with R10. And now when we connect power, LED1 will be our on indicator LED. And now our circuit is done and we can put that into our box, connect it to the potentiometers and the servo motors and make sure that it all really works as a safe. Now how you do that depends of course a lot on the box that you're using and I'll be showing you what I did. Now I will be soldering some of those wires to pin headers because I think it makes for a little bit of a better connection to the breadboards. But if you do not want to solder then don't worry about it. There's a link in the companion article to so called DuPont style wire connectors that are wires that have the correct endings already readily attached to them. So feel free to use those if you don't want to solder. Let's go. Now it's time to put everything into this little box here. And I'm also using some 3mm acrylic sheets as a building material. First order of business is the battery pack and after scoring the rough outlines I used my Dremel tool to cut out that shape and the material unfortunately melted on me a little bit so I had to use an X-Acto knife to cut it out and in the end it looked a bit messy but it was mostly fine. Now these breadboards have an adhesive back which is really nice and holds them in place really securely. You can already see the power button is working well. But I wanted to make sure that everything is working at this point so I connected a potentiometer, plugged it into the breadboard and also connected a servo just to make sure that everything is working as intended and I was very relieved that yes everything was working fine. Then I also added some proper pin headers to the ends of the servo wires. These are the knobs that I wanted to use and they look really nice but I didn't really know how to arrange them. I ended up with this sort of triangular pattern here which I quite like. Drilling acrylics is a bit of a pain but if you take your time, use increasing drill bits and some lubricant like WD-40, it actually works quite well. Just don't push too hard and you will be fine. And then you can just screw the potentiometer in place and connect the knobs. And I think that looks actually really, really sleek. Now it was time to put the servos in place. I cut out another bracket for them and then I had to make some cutouts for the servos. And that was a bit of a pain because, well, acrylic is not so easy to, to work with. But with a whole bunch of files and after a lot of dust, uh, the servos finally uh, fit, all fit in place. So I guess it was worth the trouble. But yeah, there's a lot of dust, so make sure you wear a mask or something like this to protect yourself. Using again E6000 to fix the servos in place, that worked really, really well. And then I'm using a friction fit with hot glue actually to wedge this uh, bracket here into place and that worked quite well as well. Now I can connect the servos and actually give this a try for the first time. Now it's time to actually make the lock and I was going way too accurately here uh, creating those cutouts for those little arms again making a lot of dust and uh, giving this a try if this fits one so there's some clearance here and I also added a cable guide to keep the cables out of the way and to fix this whole uh, locking mechanism in place glued some other piece of acrylic to it and then decided to just well glue it together in place because that's the easiest way to do this adding some hot glue here and then closing the lid that actually glues it exactly where it needs to be. There were some problems with uh, clearance here but nothing a few files can't take care of. And then in the end everything was working as intended. 
I added some feet so that the safe could stand on something and after a whole lot of dirt, in the end the safe was done. And there you have it, our safe is done. Now I had a lot of fun building this project, but I underestimated the amount of time that it takes to work with acrylic and also the mess that it makes. So maybe if you give this a try yourself, use wood instead. I think this is a great beginner's project because it doesn't use any microcontrollers and well, it uses the same circuit three times in a row. So if you wanna just build one of them or two of them or 27 of them, it's all gonna be exactly the same. So if you are a little bit on the fence on whether you're going to get started with electronics or if you know somebody who is, maybe this video can convince you or them to give it a try yourself and I really hope that I can inspire you to give it a go. Now if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out in the comments down below or on social media and I'll do my very best to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching, let me know what else you want to learn and I'll see you next time.